Hi guys, um, today I'm going to um, explain a few more things um, um, to what I've done to my 450 sports model. Previously um, I explained um, how to mount GoPro camera to 450 model. Um, well, just to quickly recap, um, well if you want to uh, learn um, and know a bit more detail about the mounting GoPro camera 450 model and please refer to the my previous um, tutorial uh, but this is just a quick review of what, what I did um, you just need to buy uh, this expansion uh, package from the GoPro uh, bar mounting system which comes about a couple of pieces like this so what you need to do is you just make a little hole on the bottom plate it doesn't matter i'm using the micro uh, heli aluminium metal plate but you can use it with the plastic plate as well it's easier to make a hole um and i've done that it's just uh, just the same as the um the, uh, the metal plate anyway make a hole and then just uh, get this um, piece and then slide in and using the gopro pro provided screw you secure it and um um, and just slide the GoPro uh, casing there. Um, I'm just using two little pieces there, and then just I can just uh, adjust it like that. But um, it's it's your pr uh, your preferences. Yeah, you can just uh, you know uh, click a couple more things, make a bit more extended. But obviously you need to um, think about the center of gravity as well. But anyway, I like my setting, and this is a super state, uh, super rigid and very solid as well. It's um. It's just, uh, you know, like a part, um, just totally integrated, so very, um, very rigid. But anyway, um, I've done, uh, since then, I've done a few things on my 450 helicopters. I'm going to go through step by step. Um, people say, um, well, I know that some people extend the main blade um, because you feel, uh, you know, so much more nicer than just to fly normal 450 model. Some people say it's like flying 500 model with the 450. So um, I was thinking it would be a good idea to give um, better stability and um, for my area of videography purpose, I thought it was a good idea to extend it. And um, this is what I've used. This is um, a part from Outrage G5 model. So simply I bought um, a tail broom uh, as a just a normal part. And it comes with two, so I've got one spare. And you just need to buy this, um, you know, the belt for the G5 model. And just one more thing, you just need to buy this uh, tail push hook because the online model is uh, shorter, so you can't you can't use that with a, a extended one. Just one more thing, and as you can see, there's no um, sort of hole for the slit like, because the sports model has got little. Um, uh, a slit where you can anchor securely with um, you know so you can slide in there but this model doesn't have this uh, slit there so what I've done is I used the trammer tool with a drill made, made a little slit and I've secured slide it in and secured it so it doesn't you know rotate in you know in any way so uh, just again very rigid um, so that's that. You just need the three parts and tail broom for G G5. Again, belt for it and push rod. Those three. It's not gonna cost you that much. And because extended tail broom, now you can use this um uh, extended 350 millimeter blade. And normally the tail blade come up to here, about here, which is directly below the um you know. The main rotor, and uh, if you give uh, uh, you know the elevator a throw, it's gonna hit it eventually sooner or later, and then cause devastating you know uh, tearful um, incident, which uh, nobody wants. Mm. And I'm just going to uh, give you a quick uh, comparison between uh, different blades, so give you um, just a, a kind of a idea what you expect from it. So this is 350mm fly ballast radix blade which I've mounted on my helicopter and 
this is the thunder power blade uh, which normally people use it for 450 model um, and as far as I'm concerned as far as I'm concerned this is the longest blade you can use without modifying without stretching the tailbone so that's that and that's normal uh, 325 millimeter um, relic blade and this is a line blade and um, just common ones, lots of people use it. And this is just a uh, cheap or line blade, plasticky. But anyway, let me just uh, line up so you can see the, the length of each blade compared to each other. So I lined up nicely there, see? And there you go. Like I said, um, that uh, Thunder Power blade which is the longest you can get without stretching the tailbone and you see there's a difference there uh, that's about 2.5 centimeter difference between thunder power and 350 millimeter blade okay let's get rid of these because this normal line blade is just like the 325 radix blade so compare those three let's see between normal radix and thunder power, that's about one centimeter difference. And uh, thunder power and 350 radix blade, um, that's about 2.5 centimeter difference. So, see, um, with normal blade, that makes about 3.5 centimeter difference, I suppose. There you go. So, yeah. That's quite a bit of difference, isn't it? So that's a flyballer's blade. I'm using it at the moment because I've upgraded the um, the head to RJD, a flyballer's head. And I'm using this Helicommand Rigid model because I found it's extremely helpful to use the stabilization mode from a unit like this. I know there are some uh, fly mentor or, or um, there's a few other models you can't, which I can't remember at the moment but I quite like this uh, the rigid model does the fly ballless unit as well as a stabilization um, a function and the position hold function stabilization function does um, just hovering by itself so you can just um, if you um, want to do something like um, let's say if you mount some servo to change the angle of camera then you can just turn this on and hover it by yourself you can just wiggle around uh, for example um, and um, uh, position hold mode it's got a um, camera underneath here so we'll be looking down uh, on the ground and try to hover on one spot which it doesn't really work all the time because you need to get a um, um, good uh, contrast which means you're gonna you're gonna need a good sunlight um, so I, I normally don't bother with it does work well when it comes to a nice sunny day with a good contrast um, but I don't normally bother it normally use the um, stabilization and fly ballast unit um, just quick demonstration wise um, I'm using the a channel uh, receiver transmitter system Oops, let me just turn that on first. Okay, turn that on. Throttle hold on, and let me just power that up. Okay, so um, anyway, I'm using the. Okay, now it's initialized. When it's a red, it's that means it's only doing the flyballless controller. Um, and when I flip work. I've uh, used this a uh, pilot channel to auxiliary too. So if I just flip down, it will change to amber with, with amber color, which means it will be just um, as try to stay and hover itself, and not on the spot. Uh, it's just stabilization mode. So if um, you tilt it, you see the swash plate will be tilting it and try to stay. So that's that, and. Normally, if you just want to fly flyball, fly ball less, um, that's red. Down, that's uh, hovering by itself. And if you flip up, it will be turning to green, which means it will be looking down the camera and try to 
uh, stay in one spot and hover itself but it doesn't normally work perfectly so I just don't bother it and um, uh, what I've done again here this way um, I've um, installed video transmitter here um, and uh, as a power source I'm using 301 battery for powering up the helicopter as well as powering the video transmitter so I'm using the balance plug here um, and I've just installed a little hub going to video transmitter that goes like that and the, um, using this uh, four pole um, uh, connector which I hacked into um, the line provided with provided with the, the video transmitter so I hacked that up and connected to um, GoPro camera um, so if I connect it the video transmitter is on and obviously the video transmitter tends to be get really hot so I've installed this little fan um, which uh, I've, again I did a few things um, I'll explain you guys and this is uh, something called uh, e-flight universal light kit so I've connected that with uh, one of the free channels on my receiver uh, which I connected to um, uh, a gear channel so I've connected this um, universal light kit on the gear channel and it comes with the four uh, power lines uh, black and yellow normally you connect with this you see this light it comes with the navigation light so you connect supposed to connect that but I cut the uh, one connector out and connected this uh, power uh, to fan so um, this can be really good um, application for anything you want to use um, because you can install airsoft gun with the power so you can just turn and off from the transmitter so if I flip it the fan is on I've installed the same web as I said this comes with the four connector connections one comes with one goes into fan two goes with one to the navigation navigation light and one is free which I've just you know strapped in here just in in case uh, for future future use um, so it can be um, quite useful you can install any application like airsoft guns or um, some kind of um, um, I don't know I can't think of any um, thing particular at the moment but you can turn and off from transmitter um, and I've installed that because sometimes if I want to fly with a video transmitter I don't want to extra power draining into the fan so when I see the navigation light is on I know the fan is on so I can turn it off but anyway and that's that um, this is video uh, a receiver and um, I've connect that and now it's on and this is um, just normal uh, DVD player but um, what I would do is for FPV use I turn this on right now that uh, now what I need is just turn on the, the GoPro camera okay let me just recap quickly so video transmitter is powered from the three cell uh, one battery and same thing powers up the whole heli and the GoPro camera is powered by its own battery so now as you can see over there it's um, connected and you'll be flying like this as you see there you go so that uh, is my FPV setting oops okay that's that let me just turn that off now because I'm um, just showing you so Turn that off, turn that off, I'll turn that off as well. Right. So that's the FPV using GoPro. Um, um, because I am using the uh, flyballess helicomand rigid controller, I thought it would be a very good idea to have um nice digital servo, servo. Um, and obviously um, I've invested quite a bit in here 
um, but um, was known as the best mini servos for 450 size. This is MKS DS95 servos. I've installed three on there. Very, uh, weak. Uh, it's a very strong and um, very fast. Um, so that's that. And um, I'm using the external uh, gyro, which is online GP780. Um, as that's on the bottom plate in there, and. I've upgraded the uh, ESC, this is Kessler Ice 50, and I'm using um, governor mode uh, set on 2800 RPM, which uh, is just about, about, about perfect for the uh, GoPro um, setting. It's not too fast, not too s uh, slow, it's just about right, um, and flies nicely, it flies very nice. Um, so that's that don't think i've forgotten anything else um so um that's the things i've done since i've um, made the previous GoPro mounting session or tutorial video um okay i think that's it if you have any question please let me know or try to answer it as much as uh, you know as uh, as helpful as possible so um right thank you very much